Okay, in this video, we are going to introduce how to apply a uh, binomial distribution, Poisson distribution, normal distribution, and exponential distribution using SignPy stats module. If you would like to know more about SignPy stats module, feel free to check out the uh, documentation, and here's the link. And for each of the four distributions we are going to discuss over here, the link to their documentation is also provided over here. For each of the four distributions, we are going to focus on the three main functions. Uh, PMF, probability mass function, and of course, uh, we use PMF because a binomial distribution is a discrete distribution. Of course, we also need the cumulative distribution function, also known as cumulative density function. Last but not the least, the inverse CDF, also known as percent point function. For example, in binom.pbf, if say q is 0.9, then this function is going to return the 90th percentile. For continuous distributions like normal distribution and exponential distributions, uh, we have PDF, probability density function, instead of PMF. Now, let's look at some of the key parameters of those distributions. Uh, in Poisson distribution, the parameter mu over here is the mean of the distribution or the mean occurrence or arrival rate. In the normal distribution, not surprisingly, log by default is zero is the mean, and scale is the standard deviation, and by default, it is equal to one. Now let's look at exponential distribution. The meaning of log and scale is slightly different. Log over here is, as a matter of fact, the starting time. Uh, by default, it is equal to zero, in all of our examples, uh, we are going to set starting time as zero, so we don't have to worry about uh, luck. The parameter scale over here by default is equal to one, and here, scale is the standard deviation, but because for exponential distributions, standard deviation is equal to the mean, so scale is also the mean of the distribution. That is to say, Scale is also the mean inter-occurrence time or inter-arrival time. Here is an example. Uh, let's say uh, every five minutes, uh, we're getting a customer coming to our store on average. And in this case, the inter-arrival time between customers is five minutes. On average, we have one customer uh, in five minutes. Now let's see how we can use them to answer some questions. First of all, let's import those four distributions from SignPy stats module. Let's look at example one. In San Francisco, 30% of workers take public transportation daily. Take a random sample of four workers. Let X be the number of workers taking public transportation out of these four workers. We want to answer the following questions. First, what is the probability that exactly three workers take public transportation? I'm hoping that you know we are going to use binomial distribution over here. And more specifically, we are going to use probability mass function. In binom.pmf, x is equal to three, n is equal to four, and p is equal to 30% or 0.3. Here we got the result. Uh, this tells us that there is 7.56% chance that exactly three workers out of four take public transportation. Next question, what is the probability that at least three workers take public transportation? There are different ways of answering this question. From time to time, I see students uh, did something like this. 
Here we want to know the probability that at least three workers take public transportation. That is to say, this probability is equal to binom dot PMF. The probability that exactly three workers take public transportation plus the probability that exactly four workers take the public transportation. Of course it works, but over here I don't want to recommend uh, this way of answering this question. And let's take a look at the way I did it first. Here's what I did. Okay, I tried this. One minus binom dot CDF x is equal to 2, a is 4, of course p is still 0.3, and if we give it a try, both ways give us the same answer, but how come I'm saying that my way is a little better? Uh, here's the thing, suppose we uh, have a random sample of not 4 workers, but 400 workers and we would like to know the probability that at least 300 workers take public transportation. Yeah, of course, theoretically you can still answer the question this way, but as you can probably imagine, this is going to be really, really, really long. Instead, we can turn to CDF, Cumulative Distribution Function. Remember that CDF is defined as the probability that our random variable is less than or equal to a certain value. So, in order to get the probability that at least three workers take public transportation, we do the following. One minus the probability that at most two workers take public transportation. That's exactly what this binom.cdf does. And we can run the code, and the result says that there's about 8.37% chance that at least three workers take public transportation. Now, let's look at the last question. What is the probability that at most three workers take public transportation? This is exactly how CDF is defined. So we can simply plug in the numbers directly. By norm.cdf. 3,4,0.3 and the result is 99.19%. Now let's look at one application of Poisson distribution. Phone calls arrive at the rate of 48 per hour at the reservation desk of regional airways. And this is equivalent to 4 phone calls per 5 minutes span or 12 phone calls per 15 minutes span. Let's take a look at the questions. The first one, what is the probability of receiving three calls in five minutes time interval? On average, in five minutes time interval, we receive four phone calls. As a result, mu is equal to four, and we are looking for the probability we receive three calls. So it's nothing but Poisson that PMF three comma four, and it shows that there is about 19.5% chance that we receive three calls in five minutes time interval. Second question, what is the probability of receiving exactly 10 calls in 15 minutes? As mentioned earlier, in a time interval of 15 minutes, on average we receive 12 phone calls. So the value of mu is 12, and here we want the probability of receiving exactly 10 calls. So x is equal to 10, and the probability of that is about 10.5%. Okay, let's look at the next question. Suppose no calls are currently on hold. If the agent takes 5 minutes to complete the current call, how many callers do you expect to be waiting by that time? And what would be the probability that none will be waiting? 
First of all, let's answer the first part of the question. How many callers do you expect to be waiting by that time? Because it takes the agent five minutes to complete the current call, we expect that on average there should be four callers calling in. So the answer to this part of the question should be four, or mu is equal to four when the time interval is five minutes. Now the second part of the question: What is the probability that nine will be waiting? That is to say, what is the probability we receive? Or the agent receives zero phone call in five minutes span. So here's what we're going to do: Poisson dot PMF zero comma four. The probability that nine will be waiting is going to be one point eight percent. Now let's look at the last question about Poisson distribution. Suppose uh, there's no call. Currently being processed, what is the probability that the agent can take three minutes break without being interrupted by a call? And this is the same as the probability that the agent will receive zero phone calls in three minutes. Given that the time interval is three minutes, we expect that on average there should be two point four. Phone calls. If you wonder how we get two point four phone calls every three minutes, recall that earlier we said forty、uh, eight phone calls per hour. One hour has sixty minutes of calls. That is to say, on average, every three minutes,、uh, we should be receiving forty eight divided by twenty, which is two point four phone calls. Once we know that, it's very easy to answer the question. So the probability that、uh, the agent can take three minutes of personal time without being interrupted is going to be Poisson dot PMF zero comma two point four, and the probability is about nine point one percent. Now let's look at example number three. For borrowers with good credit scores, the mean debt for revolving a Installment account is fifteen thousand and fifteen dollars. Assume the standard deviation is thirty five hundred and forty dollars, and that debt amounts are normally disputed. We would like to answer the following questions. First, what is the probability that the debt for a borrower with good credit is more than eighteen thousand dollars? This is equal to one minus the probability that. The debt is no more than eighteen thousand dollars. So we do the following: one minus norm dot CDF x is eighteen thousand. The mean is fifteen thousand and fifteen, and standard deviation is thirty five forty. Here's the result: there is about twenty percent chance that the debt for this borrower is more than eighteen thousand dollars. Next question. What is the probability that the debt for a borrower with good credit is less than ten thousand dollars? That's exactly how CDF is defined, so we can just plug in the numbers. Norm dot CDF ten thousand mean fifteen thousand fifteen. Standard deviation thirty five forty. The result seven point eight three percent. Okay, let's look at a few more questions. Question number three: What is the probability that the debt for a borrower with good credit is between twelve thousand and fifteen thousand dollars? This is nothing but the probability that the debt is less than or equal to eighteen thousand dollars minus the probability that the debt is less than or equal to twelve thousand dollars. As a result. Here is what we need to do to get the answer. Norm dot CDF eighteen thousand log fifteen thousand fifteen scale thirty five forty, and this part gives us the probability that the debt is less than or equal to eighteen thousand dollars. The second part, norm dot CDF twelve thousand, this gives us 
the probability that the debt is less than or equal to $12,000. The difference of the two gives us the answer to the original question. And it shows that there is about 60.3% chance that the debt is going to be between $12,000 and $18,000. Next question. What is the probability that the debt is no more than $14,000? And once again, that's how our CDF is defined. So we plug in $14,000 directly without changing luck and scale. The answer says that there is about 38.7% chance that the debt is no more than $14,000. The last question. If a borrower is in the 85th percentile, what is the debt for this borrower? Here, we are going to use the inverse CDF function or PPF function. The mean, the standard deviation remain the same. All we need to do is to plug in 85% or 0.85 in this PPF function. It shows that the 85th percentile is $18,684. In other words, uh, there are about 85% borrowers uh, whose debt is less than or equal to this amount. All right, let's look at our last example. Uh, this example is about exponential distribution. When this restaurant has been recognized for having the fastest average service time among fast food restaurants. In a benchmark study, when this average service time was 2.2 minutes, assume that the service time for Wendy's has an exponential distribution. Here are the questions. First one, what is the probability that a service time is less than or equal to one minute? Recall that uh, for exponential distribution, the standard deviation and the mean are equal, in this case, 2.2 minutes. So over here, all we need to do is to plug in the following. X bound CDF, X is equal to 1, and the standard deviation or the mean is equal to 2.2. It shows that there is about 36.5% chance that a service time is less than or equal to 1 minute. Okay. Let's look at the uh, next question. What is the probability that a service time is between 30 seconds and 1 minute? 30 seconds, of course, are just uh, 0 0.5 minute. So we do the following. Uh, X bound dot CDF, X is equal to 1, standard deviation 2.2, minus X bound dot CDF, X is 0.5, Standard deviation is the same. The result shows that there's about 16.2% probability that a service time will be between half a minute and one minute. Now let's look at the last question. Suppose a manager of a Wendy's is considering instituting a policy such that if the time it takes to serve you exceeds five minutes, your food is free. What is the probability that you will get your food for free? Uh, the answer to this question is nothing but the probability that the service time will be more than 5 minutes. So it is equal to 1 minus the probability that the service time will be less than or equal to 5 minutes. And the answer shows that there is about 10% chance the service time will be more than 5 minutes. In other words, there is about 10% chance you will be able to get free food from these Wendy's.